Have you been playing games like World of Warcraft for years, or like Black Desert Online, or Final Fantasy, or Terra, or like PUBG? Well, this video is about how you can turn those video game mechanics and video game skills into real life skills for your business or for your career. If you want to get more success tips and learning from me, David Wong, make sure you subscribe to the David Wong Entrepreneur Show. Like, comment, and tell your friends about this video. With that said, let's get on with the show. I'm here with my good friend, Kevin Lee. He is the CEO of Brigade Media. He's generated over $65 million in revenue through his marketing company. And he's also one of the top video gamers on PUBG, he's the top 20 on the server, right? Conqueror level with PUBG. Amazing. Used to be, used to be. Thank you so much, David. Okay. Thank you. You're probably thinking, I thought playing video games are just for losers, right? Yeah, that's what our parents always tell us. You're not gonna get anywhere if you play video games all day. We do learn quite a bit of stuff from playing video games and that's all applicable in business, your everyday business. But now we have a video game player, professional Yeah, esports e e e scene is huge right now. Right? What's the top guy make right now? Uh, I think right now, eSport teams, an average player makes $300,000 yeah. in salary, and that doesn't include their earnings on, you know, live stream, prize money. So they make quite a bit of money. The first one is items, looting, and mining. Yeah, items, looting, and mining. That's, you know, the equivalent of you building up your wealth in, in business. Having items, having gold, or any type of currency in the game to buy items is, is the very basic thing. Every player starts you know, by trying to accumulate wealth. They can buy armor, they can buy weapon, and it's actually the same in life. In real life, you know, we're working, we're earning money. It's, it's the same concept. Okay, so there's two ways of making money in a real game. Yeah. And the second way is through crafting, yeah. which is using the items you have and making something new. Exactly. Okay. With that, you know, your, your weapon gets a power up and you can make more money by selling it on the market, which, you know, again, you look at real life, it's the same thing, same exact thing. Which leads us to the third mechanic, which is... which leads us to the third mechanic, which is market and economy. In video games, how does it work? I, I'm sure a lot of viewers right now, we've played MMO, where you know you go to this merchant place or an auction house and you're always looking for the next item or the next weapon that you want, the upgrade that you want, and then you see how much it costs. When I was playing a game, I keep going to the marketplace every hour or every day just to scout out how the market is. So when I see the item I want, I know exactly how much it should cost. And when I see the item for a cost that I think is a good deal, I could pick it up right away. So let's say if you're in the market to purchase a home, you're looking at all the different properties up there and you're trying to find the best deal. The exact same concept as how a marketplace works and how the economy works. The next game mechanic is friends and guilds. So how does that apply? Uh, guilds where you, you're building a community and once you have a community, all sorts of interesting things could happen. So in your typical MMO or any competitive game, you build a community to make your overall collective, your team stronger. You can go for harder raids, fight for unique bosses that other people compete for. So the bigger the guild, the more resource you have and the more powerful your team, your guild becomes over time. Right. The same in real life, you know, if you want to achieve something bigger, you build a team. You find the right people for the team and you go on from there. It's like building a corporation, like what you did, David. Right. Right. You started. You started small, and then slowly, you you took talents from different different areas: graphic design, website development, fulfillment, and look where you're at now. You're 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 you own a multi-million dollar business. That's right. From building a guild. It's yes. The same I built a guild in real life. Yeah. And then I made friends with the right people. Yeah. And I, I recall you calling me, you, you uh, telling me you built a guild in Final Fantasy. I did. And you were a guild leader there too. I was guild leader in Final Fantasy. <laughs> I played Final Fantasy for six months and then I built a guild for about 200 people. 
and I had the biggest house in on the server. Yeah, I'm, sh <laughs> I'm sure all that applied, right? To own a big house in Final Fantasy, there's a lot of money involved, right? Yeah, it was pretty expensive. Everybody yeah. had to contribute. The next game mechanic is skills. Just like skills in the game. How does that apply to real life? Skills is really the same thing in life and in game. You know, certain people are good at certain things. And I think it's good that we're talking about this right, right after we talked about guilds. Because obviously you need people with different skill trees in the game. And it's the same thing in building an organization, right? You need people who are good at their jobs to right. do something that you're not so good at. Right. So the overall quality of either the service or the product that you're manufacturing is way up there. Which leads us to the next one, which is party composition. Right, party, well, it's, it's like a micro level of how the guild works. In guild, we're talking about having enough tanks, having enough damage dealers, having enough healers. Party is just a smaller size of that, more about micromanaging. So instead of thinking about, for example, your corporation where you have departments, now you think projects. Let's say a new, for me, for myself, let's say a new website project comes in, I gotta find the right coder. Is it the front-end or back-end coder? I have to find the right graphic designer, UI, UX designer, and I have to find the right marketer to design you know, for conversions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And that's what party composition is. So the next mid-game mechanic is choosing the weapons. This is actually, I think, very similar to the point above. Whenever you're presented with a problem, let's say in the, in the game when you're fighting an enemy or a boss, they have like elemental weaknesses or, or debuff weaknesses, and you're always trying to do the right things. Mm -hmm. So in real life, it's really the same thing. When you're given a project or a task, you have to find the most optimal way to do it, mm -hmm. right? So let's go back to that website example, right? Let's say if the requirement for the website is for it to be, for it to sell dog food, you have to build a e-commerce website, right. right? And you have to build it with the proper payment solutions, payment gateways and whatnot. So mm -hmm. that's about choosing the weapon. Okay, now the next three is very important. It's all about strategy. So there's three kinds of strategies that are important in a video game. And the first one is positioning. Right. Positioning, it's, it's very, very crucial in every game you play. I play a lot of PUBG. It's all about catching your enemy by surprise and knowing where the enemy is. In real life, you have to know about market on a micro level, where your opportunities are for your firm, uh, where your threats are for your products, and position yourself in the marketplace properly so that you will always have an advantage or an edge. How about awareness? Very, very similar. Again, it's about knowing your surroundings. In games, you know, you have to know when you're getting ganked by another party, uh, or you have to know in PUBG where that sniper is or where he's shooting at you from. Being aware in those games will save your life, and being aware in business will allow you to know the market trends so you can anticipate different things that are going to happen to your business. That's right. The last and final game mechanic <coughs> is to know your enemy. Know your enemy. Yes, you have to know your enemy, especially in PvP-oriented games. Like, you have to know what the other party has. You have to know what kind of item they have. You have to know what their party strategy is. You know, do they go for the fast kill after the debuff? All that sort of stuff. In business, it's the same thing. You have to know what your competition is doing to properly position yourself. I make a lot of websites. I do a lot of marketing on Google, on Facebook. Well, there's a lot of other agencies that do that too. Right? I don't want to compete with them on something that they're super good at or better than me. I have to find something that I'm better than them at so that it will be for me to approach you know, the same clients and sell them a different package. Mm -hmm. And that's service. And for products, I'm sure you did a lot of product research, competitor research about how your product fares against other people's product. Right. To find that right fit and the best positioning for you to do your market mm -hmm. to achieve you know, maximum optimal results. So those are the 10 game mechanics that we use in video games that applies to real business. So if somebody wants to play with you on PUBG Mobile, what's your handle? Yeah, well find me on PUBG Mobile, H2O Tonkatsu. This is how you spell it. Find me on PUBG Mobile. All right, thanks Kevin for your video game wisdom. Anytime, like David, anytime. Video anytime. Game. anytime, anytime. You're the video game master. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>